What's up guys, Alvaro here. Welcome to the bilingual stock market channel again. In this channel, we talk about the stock market and we do it in two different languages, English and Spanish. So if English is not your cup of tea, you can also watch this very same video narrated by me in Spanish. In this video, I want to go over the 10 top stocks that I am going to be keeping a close watch on during the first week of December. And I also want to show you guys how my two main investment and trading portfolios did during the last week of November. So let's get started. What you guys can see over here is my main investment and trading portfolio on Robinhood. And check this out, guys. Last week alone, this portfolio increased in value $11,764 or 11.98% in only a matter of five trading days. Unbelievable. And over here, I have a screenshot of my second investment and trading portfolio. And as you guys can see over here, the return that I am getting out of this portfolio last week alone was $3,016 or 7.53% in only one week. And check this out, guys. I opened this portfolio, my second investment and trading portfolio, back in July of this year. And I'm gonna pull up here a one year chart that reflects the behavior of this portfolio since it was opened. And so far I have a return, okay, since July of this year of $16,904 or 64.777% in only a matter of five or six months. And in the case, of my main investment and trading portfolio. I'm gonna pull up here a one year chart. I opened, I already told you guys this, I opened this portfolio back in January of this year. And so far the return that I am getting out of it is $73,867 in only a matter of 11 months or 204.42%, unbelievable. This is the reason why I wanted to start my YouTube channel. This is something that everyone can do. Uh, it requires obviously hard work. It requires discipline, but this is something doable, guys. I am not a genius. I, I am always highlighting this. And check this out, guys. The total return that I am getting out of these two portfolios this year is $90,771 in a matter of 10 mo 11 months, because yeah, uh, November is, is about to, to end. So in 11 months, I have made $90,771. That's truly unbelievable. So I want to encourage as many people as possible to trade and to invest in the stock market. This is something that, as I said before, anyone can do. So guys, uh, let's get into the 10 top stocks that I am gonna keep. Uh, I'm gonna be keeping a close watch on during the first week of December. Please remember, I am not a financial advisor, okay? If you guys want to trade or invest in any of the stocks that I am going to be uh, talking about in this video, you guys have to do your own research work. So let's get into this. The first stock that I wanna tell you guys about is Facebook. Check this out, guys. From a technical standpoint, Facebook is uptrending. You guys can see this uptrend channel. And here there is a technical detail that is very interesting. Check this out, guys. Facebook held first this uptrend channel at around $256 and then it held it again at around $267. So we have a clear uptrend channel. And if I zoom in here, you guys are going to notice that Facebook is holding $274, $275 like a clock and this price action around $274, $275 is being backed up by the two main moving averages that I personally use, which are the 50 SUMA line, which is the green line that you guys can see over here, and the 180 SUMA line, which is the yellow line that you guys see over here. So from a technical standpoint, Facebook looks like being like getting ready to break this red line that you guys can see over here, the 207, which, which is a very strong resistance. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in again, take a look. 
At around $279, $280, Facebook has been failing. It failed once, two, three times. So if Facebook happens to break this red line over here, which is, it has been a very strong resistance, it could fill the gap up to the upper line of this uptrend channel at around $300, $299, something like that. I am actually swing trading Facebook as of now. I'm gonna show you guys my Facebook position. You know, you guys know that I put my money where my mouth is. I have, as of now, 40 shares and a, at an average cost of $275. And I am holding this position over the weekend. And I have a profit so far of $65, but that, that is nothing, guys. That is, that is not a lot of money. So I am planning to hold my shares until Facebook gets up to $290, $295. And something that is worth pointing out here about Facebook, guys, is that it is 8% of its highs. I'm gonna show you that. Let me get here my trend line. And Facebook got to all times, all times highs on, this was August 26th and we are exactly almost 10% guys, 9.49% of uh, Facebook's uh, highs. So remember guys, this is a big tech company with an unbelievable balance sheet. So even from a long-term perspective, this is a very nice discount on Facebook. So if you guys see Facebook holding or keep on holding this uh, support at around $275, $274, this is definitely a buy, uh, taking into account that if anytime soon Facebook breaks this strong resistance that it is uh, struggling with at around $280, it is gonna very easily fill up the gap up to $290 or $300. So keep a close watch on Facebook, guys. The next stock in my watch list is going to be Palantir, guys. The data integration software company that IPO'd back in September. And since this company IPO'd, it has been on fire, guys. It has increased 162% since September. And from a technical standpoint, we can see a clear uptrend. Do you guys know that the trend is your friend until it is not? So we have a clear uptrend, but Palantir is extremely overheated. If we take a look at the RSI, it is at around 66 points too high up. Uh, I would wait for Palantir to pull back and pay a visit maybe to the 50 SUMA line at around $20. Or here we might have from a technical standpoint another very interesting spot. Take a look, at around $20, $23 a share, we have a breakout candle, a clear breakout candle to the upside, which is this uh, green candle that you guys can see over here. So if Palantir pulls back, which it should, despite it has a lot of momentum, it could stop first at around $23, which is the, the bottom area of this breakout candle to the, to the uh, upside. So I would wait for Palantir to pull back a bit. It, it, it really needs to cool off. And I would buy the first part of a swing trading position at around $23. And if it keeps on pulling back, I would uh, purchase more shares around $20, okay? Uh, as I said before, this is a company that recently IPO, that is already 162% uh, up since it started trading. And it is from a technical standpoint, for me, this is a no touch. Unless, as I, as I said before, it pays a visit to the $23 or best case scenario, $19 or $20 a share. So keep a close on the Palantir guys, but be very careful buying Palantir at around $27, $28, $30 could be a bull trap. Okay, so be, be, please be very careful with Palantir guys. The next stock in my watch list is going to be EA Sports, Electronic Arts. I love this company, guys. I am a customer myself. I really love their video games. And from a technical standpoint, we can see that EA 
is making an effort to break this downtrend channel on the four hour chart. And if I zoom in, you guys can see that EA Sport is as of now fighting at a great level of resistance, which is the 180 SU main line, the yellow line that you guys can see over here. And it is struggling to break this uh, 180 SU main line at around 125, 126 dollars. So if next week we see EA Sports breaking this 180 SU main line, it could easily fill up the gap over to $130 or maybe $140, okay? And from a long-term perspective, keep a close watch on this company because EA Sports is, as of now, 15% off its highs. Let me draw this trend line over here, yeah. It is 15.33% off its highs, so, we have a very nice discount here of a very good company with a very nice balance sheet. So yeah, it looks like it is it is breaking the, this downtrend channel. And this is a stock that I really have uh, in my watch list. And if I see EA Sports breaking this 180 SU main line, this yellow line, I am definitely picking up some shares to write it up to 130 or 140 bucks. So. EA Sports, guys, keep a close watch on it. The next stock that I want to tell you guys about is Best Buy, BBY, the tech store here in the United States. And we can see an uptrend channel over here. So from a technical standpoint, uh, Best Buy is uptrending. But if we zoom in, we can see that Best Buy is below the moving averages, the 50 SU main line, which is the green line, and the 180 SU main line, which is the yellow line, on the four hour chart. So we have a very big resistance coming up at around $115. And if Best Buy happens to break this 180 SU main line, which is, as I said before, a strong resistance, it can easily fill up to fill up the gap up to 117 118 dollars or maybe with good momentum and volume i can see best buy pulling up to 124 125 dollars where we have this uh, breakout candle to the downside so this this breakout candle to the downside once best buy pulls up is going to be a strong resistance uh, it will be broken at around $124, $125 a share. We can also, here we have another very interesting technical aspect is the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, uh, guys. So Best Buy is, as of now, the RSI of Best Buy is at 36 points. So it is pretty much in oversold territory. So it is, it is yeah, I think that Best Buy is gathering strength to make a movement to the upside. And I am actually swing trading Best Buy. I'm gonna show you guys that. Remember, I put my money where my mouth is. So in the case of my main investment portfolio, I have 40 shares at an average cost of $112.61. I am up like eight bucks as of now. And in my second, investment and trading portfolio as you guys can see over here i own 50 more shares so i am swing trading best buy as of now i own 90 shares i am very bullish on best buy and check this out guys best buy i'm gonna zoom out here is something like 12 percent 12 percent off its highs let me draw the trend line here to show you guys yeah almost 13 percent off its highs so even from a long-term perspective or even from a mid-term swing trading uh, perspective, this is a very good chance. I am very, very bullish on Best Buy. And Best Buy is a company that might benefit once the sales numbers for the Thanksgiving holiday and Black Friday uh, come out. So keep a close watch on Best Buy, guys. As I said before, it has a strong resistance coming up at around 115 bucks. And if you guys see that Best Buy is trading on good volume and it 
it breaks or it is about to break $115. This is a very nice opportunity to ride it up to $120 or $125 a share. So best buy guys, keep it in mind. Okay guys, let's move on. The next stock in my watch list is going to be Beyond Meat, ticker symbol B, Y, and D. In the case of Beyond Meat, we can see that it is, as, and as I said before with Electronic Arts, it is trying to break this downtrend. You guys can see this red line over here. And right now, Beyond Meat is trading between the moving averages, the 180 SUMA line and the 50 SUMA line. And it seems to be kind of consolidating at around $140, $138. So, in my opinion, a possible scenario, and I would arguably say an attractive scenario in the case of Beyond Meat, would be if it pulls back down to the 50 SUMA line at around $134. And if Beyond Meat happens to hold $134, I would be definitely picking up some shares over here. So, I could write it up as a swing trade or even as a day trade up to $145 as a day trade and if I would like to take a swing trade I could hold my shares up to the 180 SUMA line around $156, $155. So that would be in my opinion a possible uh, scenario for uh, Beyond Meat. Uh, also something that is worth pointing out about Beyond Meat is that it has a severe discount from its highs. Let me show you guys. Um, it is almost 30% off its highs, guys. So this is a very nice discount on Beyond Meat. Remember guys, this is a plant meat based company and this is a company that I, that I really like. I myself, I am a vegetarian, so this is a company that I am actually related to. And I really like the, the company management. This is a company that is always working on deals with uh, a lot of companies such as Starbucks Coffee, McDonald's and many others. So from a long term perspective, this is a 30% a discount, guys. All right, a very nice discount if you guys are bullish on Beyond Meat. I am bullish on Beyond Meat because I think that uh, over time people are gonna keep on uh, eating healthier. And this is a company that basically uh, makes food for vegan people and vegetarians. So I am very bullish on Beyond Meat and I am definitely going to be keeping a close watch on on Beyond Meat, if it pulls back to, as I said before, 134, 135 bucks. That would be my enterprise for Beyond Meat. The next stock that I wanna tell you guys about is DraftKings, ticker symbol D, K, and G. This is a stock that I called out in my last video and it behaved exactly as I said, guys. I told you guys that if, that, if, that if DraftKings broke the $50 resistance, it was gonna fill up the gap up to $53 or $54, and that's exactly what DraftKings did last week. So, right now, we can see, I mean, from a technical standpoint, DraftKings is uptrending. As I said before, guys, the trend is your friend until it's not. But we can see that, we can notice that DraftKings is a bit overheated. The RSI, as you guys can see here, at the bottom of the screen is at around 74 points, very, very overheated. So from a technical standpoint, DraftKings should pull back and let's say pay a visit to maybe the $50, which was, yeah, $50 was a former resistance that should act uh, now as a new support or maybe worst case scenario, DraftKings could visit maybe the, this 50 as you might line at around 47 or 48 dollars that would be a screaming buy for DraftKings but I, I don't see DraftKings it, it has a it, it has a lot of good momentum as of now so I don't see DraftKings pulling back down to 47 or 48 dollars but who knows guys this is a very volatile stock as I have already told you so if DraftKings 
pulls back down to 50 bucks, I would be buying more shares. As of now, I have 50 shares of DraftKings. I actually locked in my profit last week on DraftKings. I made like 120 or 130 dollars, but I re-entered the position because I am very bullish on DraftKings. And as you guys can see over here, I own 50 shares at an average cost of $51.93. So if DraftKings pulls back down to 50 bucks, I will be adding more shares to my position. And then I am thinking about riding uh, DraftKings up to $60, uh, give or take. Something that is also worth pointing out over here is that DraftKings is something like 18% of its highs, guys. Let me see, yeah, 19.17% of its highs. So here we have a very nice discount on a company that, as I told you guys in my last week's video, this company actually upgraded, or upgraded their 2021 guidance. So I am very bullish on this company and I am gonna be swing trading DraftKings up to $60 a share, give or take, okay? So keep a close watch on the KNG as well, guys. So let's move on, guys. The next stock that I want to tell you guys about is SPG, Simon Property Group, ticker symbol SPG. This is a real estate company that owns most of the shopping malls here in the United States. And this is a four hour chart, but here I am going to pull up the one year chart, guys, because Take a look at this. This company, before the situation of the pandemic started, was trading at around $140 a share. Unfortunately, this company was severely affected once the virus came around. And right now we have Simon Property Group, 38% of its highs. This is an unbelievable discount for, as I said before, guys, a huge company that owns most of the shopping malls that, uh, that are here in the United States. So we already know that we have a vaccine coming out <clears throat> anytime soon. So this company should be trading at pre-pandemic levels, maybe by mid of next year, maybe sooner than that. So this is a very, nice opportunity to invest in a company, to invest in a recovery stock that was severely affected once the virus came around and that is showing as of now signs of recovery, as you guys can see over here. So I'm going to pull up again <clears throat> the uh, four hour chart and I want to show you guys this, okay? So there you go, here we have the four hour chart. So take a look, we have a cleared up trend Simon Property Group is trading above the two moving averages, the 50 SMA line and the 180 SMA line, and the RSI is at 52 points. So it looks like Simon Property Group is consolidating at around $80, $85 a share. And there's another very important aspect that I want to highlight about Simon Property Group. Take a look at these guys. We have a huge resistance coming up at around 96 or 97 dollars a share. Simon Property Group failed at this price back in June, I guess. Yeah, this was in June, in early June. It failed at uh, 98 dollars a share. So it looks like it is consolidating at around 85 or 88 dollars a share. And it looks like it is building up strength to eventually take on this huge resistance that is coming up. So picking up some shares of Simon Property Group at around these prices or even pulling back a bit and paying a visit to the 50 SMA line at around $80. Yeah, $80 would be, would be a steal, guys. If Simon Property Group pulls back down to $80, I would be picking up a lot of shares, definitely. But even at the current price of $85, $86 a share, it is worth watching, guys, because once, it, once, Simon, once Simon Property Group breaks $98 or $100 a share, I can see this stock going back to pre-pandemic levels around $140, $130. Remember guys, we have a vaccine coming out anytime soon. So this is a company that I am that I have in my watch list 
not for a day trade, but more for a swing trade. Okay, I think that this is out of the bunch because we have a bunch of stocks, we have a bunch of recovery stocks out there. I think that out of the bunch, this is the company that has the best balance sheet and this is the company that might recover uh, sooner than most of the other companies that uh, have been severely affected by the uh, crisis of the virus. So Simon Property Group, guys, remember that I I told you about this company first here in the bilingual stock market channel. The eighth stock in my radar for this upcoming week is going to be Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. In the case of Apple, guys, we can see a very clear consolidation pattern at around 100, 100, 115, 117 dollars. If I zoom out, this is the four hour chart. You guys can see that, yeah, Apple has been making a consolidation pattern, as I said before, between 114 up to 120 dollars, where it has a strong resistance. And check this out, guys. From a technical standpoint, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up here the 30 minutes chart. Okay, take a look at this, guys. I'm gonna zoom in. And here we are about to see a very bullish sign, which is called the Golden Cross. The Golden Cross happens <coughs> when a short-term moving average cross, crosses above a long-term moving average. So here we have the 50 SUMA line that could potentially cross above the 180 SUMA line somewhere next week. So if that happens, which is a bullish sign, as I just said, guys, we could see Apple pulling up again up to $120 a share or maybe breaking that strong resistance that Apple has right now at, a, at about $120, as you, can, as you guys can see over here in the 30 minutes chart, okay? So we have a potential golden cross happening uh, next week. So this is, a, this is a factor that you guys have to keep in mind. Um, I'm gonna pull up again the four hour chart. And by the way, guys, take a look here in the 30 minute chart. We can see how Apple is uptrending, as you guys can see over here, okay, this uh, red line. And if I pull up again the uh, four hour chart, take a look. Apple is, uh, let me get my drawing tool over here. Apple is, as of now, 15% of its highs, guys. This is a very nice discount. Remember, this is the this is the largest company of the world in terms of market capitalization. So we have a very nice discount on Apple. We have a consolidation pattern and we have a potential golden cross unfolding somewhere next week. So I, I actually have 40 shares of Apple and I also purchased this last week uh, Apple calls uh, that expire in February 19th, I guess. So needless to say, guys, I am very, but very bullish on Apple. And I think that there is a huge potential here and we might be seeing all time, all times highs at around $135, $138 anytime soon. This is a great opportunity. This is a very nice price to invest even on a long term. And from a swing term, from a swing trade perspective, there is a huge potential here in Apple, guys. So keep a close watch on this. The next stock in my watch list is going to be NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. This is a company that I have been day trading and swing trading very often. I am very, very bullish on NVIDIA. And take a look, guys. Here in the four hour chart, we can see a textbook consolidation pattern, just as, as we just saw in the case of Apple. So take a look, NVIDIA has been consolidating at around, and I'm going to zoom in here a bit, it has been consolidating at around 520 up to $536, give or take. So right now, NVIDIA is at a very strong resistance. So as you guys can see over here in the four hour chart, this green line, which is the 50 SUMA line. So if NVIDIA happens to break, this 50s you may line on good volume and momentum, it could easily fill the gap up to $540. 
and watch out for a breakout of this 180 SMA line, guys. If Nvidia breaks for $540 a share, as I said before, on good volume and momentum, we could easily see $568, $570. This is a very volatile stock that you guys have to keep a close watch on. And check this out, guys, Nvidia, I'm gonna zoom out here. Nvidia is as of now 12% of its highs. And mind you guys, this is the second largest semiconductor company uh, of the world with an amazing uh, market capitalization that is at around $400 billion or, or something like that. So even from a long-term perspective, we have a very nice discount here on Nvidia. And in my case, if you guys ask me what I am going to do with Nvidia, if it keeps on consolidating at around, yeah, if it keeps on consolidating at around 527, 524 dollars, I might be picking up some shares, yeah, at around 524 dollars. Okay, and my price target would be breaking, breaking out of, yeah, breaking out of this. 180 SMA line at around 500, 550 or $560, okay? So NVIDIA, guys, remember, keep a close watch on it. The next stock in my watch list, the next and the last stock in my watch list is going to be Tesla, guys, good old Tesla. The company that let me make a killing out of the stock market during uh, this last week. And what can I tell you about Tesla, guys? I mean, the trend is your friend until it's not. Tesla is clearly uptrending, way above uh, the, the, the moving averages, the 50 SUMA line and the 180 SUMA line. But take a look at the RSI, guys, 74 points. So from a technical standpoint, Tesla should pull back at some point this next week and maybe, I don't know, pull back down to 540 bucks, 550 dollars. We can, we can see over here that 500 and $40 was a previous resistance back in September. So can Tesla pull back to $540 with so much momentum after the inclusion into the S&P 500 was announced? I don't know, that's anyone's guess. I don't really know. I, I, I know for sure that if we see a pullback on Tesla down to $540, I would be either buying more shares or maybe buying call options. Because I think that, remember guys, the S&P 500 inclusion is going to be carried out on December 21st. So we still have like a bunch of days ahead in which Tesla is going to be trading on a lot of, on a lot of momentum because we know that there are a lot of institutions that, train, that trade inside the S&P 500 as an index that maybe might, might still be buying Tesla shares because they are, from an institutional standpoint, forced to buy shares of any company that is about to be included into the S&P 500. So anything can happen here with Tesla, guys. In my opinion, and mind you guys, <clears throat> if you guys are thinking about trading Tesla at a short term, say a day trade or a swing trade, do not buy Tesla at these prices. Tesla is extremely, extremely overextended. And the only reason that I would recommend uh, anyone to purchase Tesla shares at these prices is thinking about the long term. Do not buy Tesla thinking about the short term at these prices. It is very dangerous. You guys can can be can get trapped in high prices and then we can see Tesla pulling back. But as I said before, anything can happen. This is a stock that is trading with a lot of momentum. And in my case, in my personal opinion, I would be buying more shares at around $540. That as I said before, is a previous resistance from back in September. Or maybe I would be purchasing call options if Tesla happens to pull back. But at this moment, guys, what is Tesla going to do is anyone's guess. Anything can happen here with Tesla and Tesla. So <laughs> I don't know. Is anyone's guess for real, guys? And now I ask you guys, what stocks are you planning to trade the, this first week of December? 
Are you guys planning to either trade or invest in any of the stocks that I mentioned in this video? Please drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. And well guys, this is going to be it for this video. I really appreciate your support. Uh, please hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out. Tesla, going to Mars. It is going to Mars, guys. <laughs> see you guys.